Hi, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to use the Algebra tab on the TI Inspire CX CAS. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about how to solve uh, either in the calculator or actually both calculator and graphing, factoring, expanding, and finding zeros, uh, both options again. So here we go. So this tab, Algebra, under Menu, Algebra, you see all these features. So we're going to be talking about solve, factoring, expanding, and finding zeros. So let's start with solve. Let's suppose I want to solve a basic polynomial. x squared minus 9. Since it's solving, we do need an equation, so equals uh, 0. And now we need a comma x. And what that does is it tells the calculator to solve for the variable x. Hit enter. Done. Let's do the same feature under graphing. To add a graph, control, page, graph. So if you remember, it was x squared minus 9. So x squared minus 9. Enter. And now I want to solve it. I want to find the zeros. Menu. Analyze graph, <laughs> zero. Go ahead and click once, click again, and there's the first answer, negative three, zero. And you can repeat the process here for the other one. So negative three, zero, and three, zero, and I think that's what we had over here. So you can graph and solve that way, or you can use the solving feature here. What if it's a trig function? Um, I personally do not recommend that we solve trig functions on this screen, and here's why. Let's suppose I want to solve um, 2 cosine x plus 1 equal to 0, comma x. Now, it's going to give me every x that makes this true. And since it's unbounded, it's going to be have infinitely many answers. So here we go. Uh, you can see this is not a very useful way of writing down the answer, especially if you're on a closed interval. So this is the main reason I do not want uh, students using this feature. Is there a way around it? Absolutely. But you'll see uh, the data entry is quite a lot, so it's just not worth it, but let's do it anyway. I'm going to go ahead and type in that same equation. Plus 1 is equal to 0. And here's where it gets tricky. We're going to put a restriction on this. So let's say I want to solve this on um, up to close interval from 0 to 2 pi. Basically, uh, one revolution. You put the evaluate bar here. And we're going to go 0, x, 2 pi, 2, And now we're going to have to call this a function. So we're going to go to store as a function of x, for example. Um, actually, we don't need the equal sign. Let's go and get rid of that. So 2 cosine x plus 1 on a closed interval from 0 to 2 pi is now going to be called f of x. Make sure and get rid of that equal sign. Uh, enter. So if if I, I just to prove what f of x is, f of x is this function that we just typed in. So now I'm going to solve f of x equal to 0 for x. Menu, solve, f of x is equal to 0 for the letter x. 
it now gives me the answers that I was uh, that I wanted originally. Um, but you can see it takes a lot of data entry to get to this location here. So the other option is to graph it. So here's my graph. I go up. Let me get, just let me check that one. And I'm going to type in two cosine x plus one. Enter. And now, let's say I want to solve it on a closed interval from zero to two pi. So we know cosine starts at zero, and then there's two pi. So these two answers right here. Let me get rid of this one. Menu, analyze graph, zero. Uh, this one to this one, and there's that same answer in radian form. There's so many advantages to graphing it, especially let's pretend this is the first third graph. I now can find the critical numbers. I can find where it's increasing below the x-axis is decreasing. I highly recommend that we graph it to solve trig functions, which we can just pull so much information from the graph versus in this form. All we really can get are critical numbers if this is a derivative. So that's the solve feature. Factoring. Let me pull up a new. So to factor something, um, menu, algebra, factor. And let's say I want to factor x squared minus 9. Since I'm factoring, it doesn't have to be an equation, so no equal to zero, and just hit enter, and it factors it for me. Expanding. Let's say I need to know what x plus 3 to the third power is. Menu, algebra, expand, parentheses, x plus 3 to the third power. And it quickly expands it for you. Finding zeros. So we've already talked about finding zeros. It's just the same as solving, uh, graphing, and let's see here. Menu, algebra, zeros. Zeros of what? Uh, let's say I want to find the zeros of x squared minus 9 x squared minus 9. Let's see if this works. The function is missing one of them. So, find the zeros of x, maybe? Yeah, that's it. So, if you want to use the zero feature, um, you don't have to type in the equal zero. Just type in the function and for what letter you want to find the zeros for. And that's it. To find the zeros on the graphing mode, you just graph it. And use menu, analyze graph, zeros. So let's suppose I want to find this one. And there's that zero. So I hope this helps. Uh, these are basic features you want to know how to use for the, the AP calculus test. Uh, it's just a little bit um, faster than doing it by hand. Thanks.